Hello, welcome to Gospel Lady Ministry. My name is Sharon Durrett, and we will get directly into the Word. You might want to take notes. Um, like sometimes I say, please be sure and check the Word for yourself. Um, don't let me or anybody else that's teaching the Word be the only source of your knowledge because the Lord can give you so much more and if you don't do your homework so to speak like the kids in school if all they do is listen to the teacher and never do their homework well they're not going to learn a whole lot well it would be good for you to do your own work in the scriptures to follow up on what you hear us say so God bless you we are in the second epistle of Peter beginning with chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied to you how? Through the knowledge of God. It didn't say through knowledge. It said of God. When you meet somebody and you begin to build a friendship, the more you get to know about the person and the more time you spend with them, the more you know them intimately. And when the the word speaks of the knowledge of God. It's not talking about historically um, how he laid the foundations of the earth and with the creation was Adam the first man, all this kind of stuff, and uh, who was Moses to and married to, and all this other kind of stuff. This makes absolutely no difference. It isn't going to increase your knowledge of God one bit. But when you read of his will, and his righteousness as set forth in his word and when you believe and trust in and follow after Jesus Christ in your obedience this is how you get to know or become intimate with God so therefore through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord without believing in Jesus Christ our Lord and trusting in him and submitting yourself to him you're never going to know God you may think you know him, and you might be extremely religious, but we need Jesus in order to be born again, in order to be saved. Not just knowing who he was, but in reading his word, giving up our carnal ways, and taking on the ways of God through the transformation in our own lives, through the word, and by the Holy Spirit. You may have a lot of knowledge up here, but in order to know him in here, that's what gives you life. That's what gives you peace. Verse 3, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let's take that one apart. He has given unto us all things that, what, pertain unto life and right and godliness. Without godliness, there's no real life. You're just walking around like a zombie. Your body's alive, but spiritually you're dead. So we must have the godliness in order to have that life. And how is that? Through the knowledge of Him, meaning the knowledge of God once again, the intimacy with God, that has called us to glory and virtue. Now these great promises that are given to us are very great and very precious promises so that by these promises through the knowledge of God 
we will be partakers of his divine nature and will have escaped the wrath of God and the sin and corruption that is in the world through the lust of man's nature and through the lust that is propagated by the devil. You cannot avoid sin if you do not pursue a right relationship with God and incorporate him into your daily life to seek him with your whole heart. Without this, you're going to be avoiding the submission to God, but you will automatically, by default, be submitting to Satan. There's no middle ground. You can't say, well, I'm going to do my own thing. You either pursue God and seek his righteousness, or you're automatically walking in darkness, which is Satan's domain. But he gives us the choice every day to walk in the light or understanding of his truth and his righteousness without sin. Or we can choose to ignore him when our desire or our lust helps us to make the wrong choice and follow after our old nature or even something that wasn't natural to us before because Satan can certainly bring up new things for you to try that you didn't get entangled in before. But by staying in the light you can see the right way to go to keep yourself from sin. And the Bible nowhere said I'm going to keep you from sin. It said that God has delivered you from the power of sin that's up to yourself to keep you from stepping in it. He'll give you all the understanding and all the knowledge of right and wrong and even his spirit to guide you but it's up to you whether you're going to choose to sin or not to sin to walk in darkness or the shadows or in the light of truth and love for the Lord and if you're not doing that if you're not walking in the love for the Lord and in his truth you are not going to take part in his nature or his kingdom in the end. Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and unto godliness brotherly kindness, and unto brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Oftentimes it is stated to me, well, I've been this way all my life. I mean, you know, I've always been quick-tempered. I'm Irish, you know, you know they're quick-tempered. Oh, fooey. Irish hasn't got a thing to do with it. It's sin. And, well, I've never really been able to have a lot of self-control. And uh, I'm kind of a hit-and-miss kind of person and uh, can't seem to settle down. It's because he's following his old, or she, is following their old sin nature. They haven't submitted control of their life to God. Because it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us is the only righteousness that there is because the flesh is unclean. And there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh or the carnal mind without God. And so if we keep saying, well... I've been a sinner all my life. Well, that may be very true. Perhaps you haven't been born again. Perhaps you are still a sinner and not sanctified by God, which would make you a saint of God. Now, a saint is not somebody that some group of people have decided to canonize them and make them a saint. That's, I don't know exactly how that came about, but it is a gross error. Because a saint is one who has received God into their life and has been born again. It means that they have been sanctified and set apart from God to cleanse and to purify and to 
redeem from the power of sin that they might have eternal life and not abide in the wrath of God and go to hell. That's the difference between sinner and saint. So, are you still going to say, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace? Or you say, well, I was a sinner. Now I'm saved by grace. Big difference. They say, well, that's just semantics. That's just using words. No, it isn't. It's truth. God's word is truth. Verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in a remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Well, that is the job that people such as myself have been given by the Lord to speak to our brothers and sisters. Some are lacking in knowledge because they haven't studied. Some took on the knowledge, but they laid it aside by lack of practice. And also because they didn't thoroughly understand it, so they didn't pursue it any further. But then there are those that have just gotten carried away with this little distraction, that little distraction, and then you attempt to draw them back into the light and say, well, I already know that. Like you're cramming something down their throat, and I don't want to hear it again. No, it is our assignment from the Lord to put you in remembrance, to call to your memory what God has said so that you can have a better chance of overcoming your own old nature and in submitting to God so that you can inherit all things in God through Jesus Christ. It goes on to say in verse 14, chapter 1, Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein too you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now the long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example to those that after should live ungodly. 
that's an example of what will happen to the ungodly. That's our example of, uh-oh, let's live godly because uh, we're not a phoenix. We can't rise up from those ashes and go on. I don't want to abide in the wrath of God, and I certainly don't want to be damned or destroyed. And he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous they are, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted a pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice for bad madness of the prophet. Now stop and think about this. Once saved, always saved. We're covered by the marvelous grace of Jesus Christ because we believe in him and we accept him we thank him for his blood sacrifice and the redemption from the power of sin forever. So what if this person deliberately sins and continues in sin? For example, the son of a pastor that I knew many years in the past. His son was a grown man in his mid-twenties and he was uh, following in his father's footsteps as far as wanting to be in the ministry is concerned. But he was a drunk. He was an addict. And he was an adulterer. And he was high on drugs and loaded up with alcohol. And he and his companion, which was another man's wife with whom he was having an affair, were killed in a motorcycle accident. And yet, his daddy, pastor of the church, preached many a sermon about the eternal security and that he just knew that his loving son was in the arms of Jesus. Because once you're saved, the devil can't have you. You are eternally secure and there's no way that you can get out of God's hand because Jesus bought you and nobody can possibly unsave you. Now, isn't this funny? They have forsaken the right way and gone astray. You can't forsake something if you've never been with it. How is a man going to forsake his wife if he never married her? How are you going to forsake a relationship with God that you never had. So obviously they had the right way. They had a right relationship with God. But they turned away from it. They forsook it. And they went the way of the devil. Think about that one for a minute. All you people that believe in eternal security. Regardless of your denomination, there are many of you who have unfortunately swallowed this poisonous pill. You need to regurgitate and get rid of it and feed on the truth. 
because it can cause you to be lost because you won't be careful about the sin in your life. And you say, well, that keeps me from sinning because I love the Lord. Well, just passing on that false doctrine is a sin, and you might preach it to someone else that doesn't keep themselves from sin. So be careful, little mouth, what you say, because anybody who loves or believes a lie will be damned. And that's a lie. So be careful. Okay? Please be careful. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who lived in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. So listen, please, my dearly beloved, listen to verse 20, chapter 2 of Second Peter. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they've known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Now, I'm going to repeat that, not to be tedious or to try to force it on you, to plead with you, to please listen to the unchanged and unchanging and unchangeable Word of God in light of this once saved, always saved. Because even though you may walk in the righteousness of Christ to please the God that you love, in error you're propagating a false doctrine that will cause many other people to think that they're safe in their sins, and they're not. And you are being a destroyer. And I'm positive that that's not what you want to do. And I'm also positive that those of you that believe that lie when you open your eyes to the Word of God, that you will see that that is not included in the agreement with God for your salvation. Verse 20, chapter 2 of Second Peter. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in other words, become saved. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Better if they had never known the way of righteousness. Then you can't be saved and not know the way of righteousness. Then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed returning to her wallowing in the mire. Well, the Jews classified anybody that wasn't a Jew as a dog, unclean. Christians are walking in the cleanness and the righteousness of God, and we are still somewhat compared to unsaved people. And we're saints, and some people even refer to them as heathen or dogs. But once you are transformed and being created in the image of the likeness of Jesus Christ, you forsake that, and you go back into the darkness of sin. Well, you're really in danger. And you're better off if you had never known the truth 
and never partaken of it than to stay out there because the punishment will be greater. It's going to be much harder. And in this life it's going to be harder because you're going to have torment of mind. You're not going to have the peace that say, you say that you have. You may be going to church and shouting hallelujah, but I'm telling you in the dark of night, you still don't have peace with God and the peace of God to get you through the trials where you don't have torment of mind. And you certainly are not going to inherit eternal life. So, if you believe or have promoted this teaching, please repent. Just read this scripture, and there are other scriptures that tell you the same thing. Please get out of this trap of Satan, that you might truly inherit eternal life and help others to do the same. We will stop here. And Lord willing, we might continue with chapter 3 of Second Peter another time. Thank you, and God bless you.